I don't talk about this much, but I've just been vegetarian for one whole year. That's 52 weeks, 365 days, over a thousand meals. Have I ascended? No, it's not no fab. <laughs> I just want to preface this video by saying I'm not the vegan teacher. I'm not going to preach at everyone and tell them what is right and what is wrong. At the end of the video, I'm going to be telling you what I'm going to be doing moving forward. I'm not a crazy teacher. <laughs> on top of that, I know not everyone is able to make this decision on what they eat, whether it's being vegetarian, being vegan, or eating meat, or being a pescatarian, or other diets that are out there. You know, I'm privileged. I'm a in a position where I can afford to buy all my own food for all my own meals and cook it how I want. Some people don't have that choice and they're just put into a certain thing and also allergies. So, yeah. Now this video is Twitter proof. Let's go through why I became vegetarian. So, it was September. It was about five in the morning and I was on my way on holiday to Cornwall. I was going down the main road and then we stopped for a while. Some sort of traffic thing and next to me were two big trucks of baby goats lambs i think they were baby goats and they all had their heads out and they were looking at me and they looked so sad and at the time i had a big pizza on my lap it had like bacon and and mushrooms you know we all know the big mushroom animals that we kill to get mushrooms it's not minecraft i, I basically had a, a meat feast pizza <laughs> and i, I closed the pizza lid box and I put it to the side and I thought okay I'm gonna be vegetarian and then it was a long car journey and I was big into the gym still at this point I just finished my personal training course and I knew how important fish oils were just for the brain and for the muscles and for the bones and the ligaments and the skin and for everything so I thought okay I'll be pescatarian and throughout the week, I just kept talking to my parents about fish. Uh, you know, not going on about it, but explaining why I was still eating fish. Where we were staying, there was a pub just across the road, a really nice pub. And they had a great list of selections. The only ones that didn't have meat <laughs> were mussels, which I'd never had before. And grilled courgettes. <laughs> so I went for the mussels. I, I did enjoy them. I, I just kept thinking of the Mr. Bean's holiday clip. <laughs> and it was great. However, disaster struck. Because of Susan Wojcicki, my phone had been listening to me. And on the second or third night, I opened YouTube to watch the Minecraft videos. And all I had was videos of fish being cruelly dissected for the market. I had been getting spied on. So I watched a couple of these videos. And I thought, <laughs> I can't eat these mussels again, not these babies. So next time I went, I had grilled courgettes <laughs> and coconut rice. And it was the nicest thing I'd had all week. <laughs> I recommend grilled courgettes or coconut rice. It is actually nice. Like, it's nicer than it sounds. That's something I've had to come terms with, with vegetarian and vegan food. A lot of it sounds shit but a lot of it actually tastes pretty good. <laughs> so that was my first week, how I went to being an avid meat eater, to pescatarian, to vegetarian. What about the other 51 weeks? <laughs> At first, I really struggled. Uh, I was just eating the same stuff. It was just cheese, and cheese and pasta, and pasta and tomato sauce, and <laughs> maybe get some onions and stuff in there, and peppers. But when I started going to the shop, I was amazed. I knew corn existed. Like just a substitute for, for mint meat. I did not realize how many substitutes there are. There's like three or four full freezers now in the supermarkets full of substitutes. You've got four different types of chicken, some made from pea protein, some made from corn. You have fish finger substitutes, sausages, bacon, turkey. There might even be lamb substitutes somewhere out there. I know there was duck substitutes, so there probably is a substitute for everything. It was crazy, so I could actually keep eating what I was eating before. Like fajitas, and pizza, and burgers. I'm a healthy guy. <laughs> but when I was making these things like curries, etc. I would just put these substitutes in. And it was so nice, because I didn't have to worry about giving myself salmonella. 
Sometimes I'd take a bite out of something and it's cold and I'm like, oh, this isn't cooked. I don't have to worry about shitting my insides out for the next two days. That is definitely a big pro of not eating real meat. It's harder to die. <laughs> a big con about it is when it's frozen, you get it all in these ready-made, if it's ready-made chunks or if it's pea protein from the This Isn't brand, it smells like dog food <laughs> when it's raw. But it cooks it and it's nice and you know it's not chicken or beef or, or whatever. But it still tastes good. It still genuinely is an enjoyable meal. But there were some, some big issues. You see, I'm a big pizza eater. Now, I love going down the menu and there's like 20 options. And there's only two I don't want. Which is the Vegetarian Supreme and the Vegetarian Hot. And going down that list and ignoring those two, the only one I can eat is the Margarita. So I became a big vegetarian a hot enjoyer. But then they have started slowly introducing vegan pizzas into a lot of new things like Pizza Hut, Domino's. It's good! But even then, there's like four choices. And if you go for a vegan pizza, you can't have stuffed crust. You can't have double decadence. You can't have anything other than thin crust. <laughs> and who likes thin crust? Another issue I had is, is meal deals. On the way to work, I often pick up a meal deal for lunch. You have 15 sandwiches to choose from. You have the triple breakfast. You have the triple chicken. You have a salmon and cucumber, tuna and sweet corn. At Christmas, you have the turkey ones. What do I have? Cheese, cheese and onion, and egg and cress. And recently, the egg and cress has started tasting like ice. <laughs> Just ice. And cheese and onion, not great for the breath. And then that lowers your crisp option. You're not going to have a cheese and onion sandwich and cheese and onion crisps. Because then you might as well get cheese and onion flavoured water. And that's gross. So that definitely took a turn. Unless you want to go to Sainsbury's where you, you can have, what was it? It was like a carrot puree with Wensleydale. <laughs> I felt so Tory. <laughs> and I did actually break my vegetarianism on two occasions. You see, I was buying crisps. And I believe they were these Walkers crinkled ones, the new ones. You have having the KFC flavour. I wasn't having the KFC flavour. I was having the spicy cheese flavour. And on the back, it says, not suitable for vegetarians. Not, not suitable for vegans. Or, not suitable for people with a dairy allergy. Not suitable for vegetarians. I thought, well, you know, what can be in it? it it's, it's cheesy flavoured crisps. What's the worst that happens? And I had a few bags, you know, over the course of a few weeks. Then I realised, really, what not suitable for vegetarians meant. See, I was just thinking of myself. I was like, I don't mind. It's not like I'm eating, like, chicken or, or lamb or whatever. But then I realised... What are they putting in these crisps for that label? Are they putting in penises? I think they were putting in duck penises into the crisps, allegedly. But you put a warning on there about any explanation. There was nothing in the ingredients list. I think there were duck penises in my crisps. Aside from that, pretty good. About six months into me being vegetarian, I did face a dilemma though. I was faced with the reality that because I was vegetarian, not for health reasons, it was more for, for ethical reasons. Like I say, I saw baby goats, not baby sharks. If I saw baby sharks, I would get fish and chips right away. You see, I went vegetarian because I saw these animals were look sad and, and, and suffering. But then you think, if people stop eating meat, the animals don't stop suffering because they just don't get bread. So you think, what's worse? An animal living a life full of suffering before it's slaughtered, or an animal not being born at all? And I know there's better stuff, there's free range, there's stuff that's better than, yeah, it's, it's not all suffering, but if you think of the analogy, it's a life full of suffering or not being born. And that's not a decision we should have. But we do, and that's the problem. So I kept on being vegetarian. 
It's like, personally, for me, I'd rather have a life full of suffering than have never been born, but it's different. We don't know what it's like. It's tough. It's It baffles your mind hole. It, it really, it really does. Because even if there's just one happy memory, we don't know how their brains work. They could be smarter than us, these, these, these goats. I like how it was goats as well. <laughs> I don't know anyone that's ever eaten goat. <laughs> That has been on my brain a lot. Because it, it, it's it's a hard decision. It really... I I don't think there's a easy answer for that. Now, one year later, what am I doing? I am no longer going to be vegetarian. But I am going to be eating very little meat. All I'm really doing is shifting the label of vegetarian off. Because, maybe it's because of Twitter, maybe it's because I'm growing up, but I fucking hate labels. If you want labels, that's fine. All I'm going to say from this point forward is about me, and it's not about invalidating anybody else. Personally, I fucking hate labels. Vegetarian, vegan, abstinent from drinking, pescatarian, feminist, social activist. Lower class, middle class, upper class. I hate them. I understand labels can be good. Say you just get diagnosed with something and you're you're coming to terms or you're, you're just coming out, for example, of the closet and you want to find like-minded people. It's good. You can find people in, in online groups by using these labels. But it can also be a very slippery slope into an echo chamber where everyone in there has the same opinion. And that can be very dangerous, and that is what Twitter is has turned into. <laughs> I don't want to be someone that is vegetarian. I want to be someone that avoids meat, because sometimes I really want meat. But I feel like I'm betraying myself if I were to have it. I don't have a religion that means I have to abstain from sex before marriage. But every time I break one of these things, that's what I feel like I'm doing. <laughs> I don't like being abstinent from alcohol. I like barely drinking alcohol. But if I want it sometimes, why not? Don't like a label of being straight, you know? Whatever happens, happens in life, you, you know? I don't like the label of atheism on me. Because if I'm prevented, presented with, with evidence or, or something, then it's there and I can have my mind changed. And I feel like these labels kind of have this thing where my mind will not be changed and it turns these choices dietary beliefs sex dating into your personality and i don't like that i'm me and these are things i do or don't do it's not my personality so i i'm just getting rid of all all labels you know in my life like i'm not a meat eater i'm not a vegetarian if I want meat, I'll have meat. If I want to drink, I will drink. I'm not a dog person, I'm not a cat person. If I want one, I will have one. Okay, I don't think she heard me. Shit, she did. Again, I'm not preaching. Your life is your choice. This is just me moving forward. That's it. <laughs> we'll see what I do in, in, in a year or so. I, I just don't like boxes. Maybe KSI is a good example, you know, he doesn't like being labelled as a, as a rapper or a boxer or, or a YouTuber. He's, he's him and he does these things. And I'm like KSI, just less famous, less rich, less remarkable right now. <laughs> I hope my points came across right in this video. Any questions, Any anything I should know, leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was informative and educational about what it is like going from a meat eater for 20 years and then becoming vegetarian. Because there are more and more substitutes every day, and in a year's time, most restaurant menus will have a lot of vegetarian options. Because right now, maybe 50-60% of restaurants to have vegetarian menus with some decent options, but not all of them do. So, we'll see. And remember, do you.
Just, just do you. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a steak. <laughs>